Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Patterns and Practices webcast, also known as Office 365 Patterns and Practices webcast. And this time we're going to talk about Azure AD implicit flow usage within the SharePoint framework client-side web port during the developer preview. And that is a mouthful, uh, we absolutely understand that. But what we want to do with this webcast is essentially tell you what is the situation right now if you are planning to use an Azure AD implicit flow for accessing Azure AD secured uh, information or assets from your client-side web port so that you know how things are working with the developer preview and what's coming up maybe in the future as well because obviously right now the experience isn't optimal but we'll work on the, on the future direction uh, to make it better with the client-side web parts as well. My name is Vesa Yuvonen. I'm a Senior Program Manager from SharePoint Engineering and with me today uh, responsible of the demo is Valdek Mastercard. So Valdek, will you do a quick demo? A uh, quick intro, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can do actually both. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Valdemar Sikas. I am Office Development MVP. I work as a senior developer at Rancor. And today, I'll be your JavaScript dude. Once again, you'll be re uh, responsible of the JavaScript demo. But before we go to the actual content and walk through uh, what does the, how does the Azure AD implicit flow uh, behaves right now with the developer preview and SharePoint framework, client-side web parts, uh, just a quick uh, note on the SharePoint patterns and practices. So SharePoint patterns and practices is an open source community-driven initiative owned and coordinated by SharePoint Engineering. So what we do is that we provide code samples from a stepping stone samples to more, much more complex samples, reusable components, guidance documentations, monthly community calls, case studies. The themes are on SharePoint Framework, SharePoint Add-in, uh, and remote API usage against on-premises SharePoint and also uh, against Office 365 in general. But let's concentrate on today's topic. So let's talk about the Azure AD implicit flow uh, considerations uh, in the context, context of SharePoint Framework. And this really applies on the developer preview of the, of the client-side web parts. Because we want to make sure that if you are uh, implementing your demos or playing around with client-side web parts, you are aware of uh, the current situation, so you don't bang your head against the wall uh, for nothing. That's really the key purpose of this webcast. Um, really, the, the challenge with the Azure AD implicit or Azure AD, uh, getting access to the Azure AD assets and resources is around the fact that within SharePoint Online, we actually use a different authorization uh, model. So Azure, uh, SharePoint Online uses forms authentic based authentication, and then Azure AD is using the Azure AD uh, authentication. And what it means is that the, the access tokens are not directly, let's say, one to one. Uh, and that means uh, uh, that whenever you need to access, let's say, a web API secured within Azure AD using the Azure AD author authorization, um, you will need to have a separate uh, sign-in or separate logging. And we do absolutely understand that that's not optimal, and we're looking into uh, changing that in the future, but it's good to be aware of this limitation right now. Uh, so in practice, if you do have a, uh, an, let's say, an operation or a functionality which needs to call a web API in Azure or sign in against the Microsoft Graph, you need to do a separate uh, sign in. And really, with the developer preview, this is slightly complicated. Uh, you need to do actually separate sign-in per each web part. So you cannot actually even share the access token between the web parts because individual web parts are actually Azure AD applications uh, or you sign in against the Azure individual Azure AD application, which is created within your Azure AD uh, as, as an endpoint. Um, the, the implicit flow does not work with an Internet Explorer, so it does work uh, properly with Chrome and Firefox and Edge, uh, but Internet Explorer 10 doesn't work at all. And with, with other IE uh, process, there might be challenges with IE zones, the security zones, uh, depending on your settings. Um, and one thing, one additional thing, kind of to be aware of this one. So because we're using a client-side um, implementation, so the JavaScript is actually uh, uh, authenticating against Azure AD. When you get the access token, the access token is within the context of the page. And technically, it means that the access token is available technically uh, uh, for other web parts in the page to take advantage as well. So if you would be using this kind of a setup in the uh, actually within the production, uh, which currently isn't even possible because we are in dev preview, there could be any kind of a security uh, challenge around this one. So that's not really an optimal situation either. 
Anything you want to add on that on the on the points, Waldeck? Um, so so actually, there is one nuance with the uh, relation to that the whole flow doesn't work in I eighteen. I i.e. 10, and that has to do with the fact that there is an an error in the ADL.js library that we currently use in the samples that we have. Um, there is a bug that prevents that library to work in i.e. 10. So in theory, if you would implement the whole flow by yourself, which isn't trivial, you might get it to work. Yes. Right. So So that's the one thing to take into account. And then, 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 still, you you have to ensure that your your internet um, also aligns with uh, security zones with the login page where users authenticate, uh, because otherwise you, the whole flow won't be able to, to finish. True, true. Uh, and that's really an IE Internet Explorer specific uh, setting because it has to secure the zones uh, functionality, uh, which it has been a kind of a painful thing uh, for the web stack developers. So that's a classic classic challenge uh, between the configurations. But really, what we want to also uh, kind of uh, make sure that you understand that these are the limitations right now in the developer preview uh, when this webcast has been recorded. Whenever we get, go closer and closer to the GA, which is the global availability of the client-side web parts, there will be improvements and there will be alternative ways of doing this, which will be implemented differently. And we are the targeting of addressing these issues within the uh, client-side uh, client web parts or within the context of SharePoint framework. Um, the, our absolute intention is that that you are able to access the Azure AD secured uh, assets uh, within the client-side web parts in a secured way, and you're able to expose that information. Because when you think of it, as an example, the information in the Microsoft Graph is extremely valuable, and it ex uh, there's a lot of, lot of interesting uh, conte contextual information which we would like to get access on um, within the client-side web parts, uh, like even simple examples, my upcoming uh, my, my upcoming meetings or my colleagues or the people search or, and so on. All of those uh, are extremely valuable scenarios and we are looking into addressing this. Now, really mentioned a few times already, we just want to make sure that you are aware of the situation right now in the developer preview and we'll update this, uh, update the guidance, uh, the, the SharePoint client-side web part uh, guidance based on the changes what we uh, release as part of the, the upcoming drops. Good, but so there's some challenges. We're going to address them, but let's have a, a look on this one uh, in practice. So let's have a conceptual, uh, let's have a look on this conceptual sample, which is showing the behavior right now. So if you're using ADL.js uh, in the React-based component, if I remember correctly, uh, yes, that's and right. what is actually the flow when you're authenticating uh, against the Azure AD. Um, so let's switch to a demo, and Waldek is going to do the demo, and we'll come back on the slides uh, in a few minutes. All right. In this demo, we would like to show you a sample SharePoint Framework client-side web part connected to Microsoft Graph that shows you an overview of your upcoming appointments. So let's add the web part to the page. And then, as we already said, the first thing that you have to do is you have to sign in with your org account to the AAD. Right, because currently, uh, even though we are um, in Workbench now, even though if you would be on your intranet, that still uses different auth protocol than the Microsoft Graph. Right, so first thing that we, that we have to do is we have to sign in with our org account. So let's do that, and here we get pop up uh, that's asking us to actually sign in with our account. So let's get the account info from our secure store and sign in, pop-up is gone, and now we load info from the Microsoft Graph. So the sign-in completed, and now we can see the overview of upcoming appointments for today that we got from the Microsoft Graph. So with that, let's have a look how how this works. So if we go to the code, uh, the first thing that you should keep in mind that there is the ADL.js library built by, by Microsoft that simplifies implementing the auth implicit flow in client-side solutions. Uh, 
and that library has been out, out, out there for a while and when you want to use that in SharePoint Framework client side web parts it works exactly the same as in the past so even though Microsoft looks now in um, trying to get the whole experience easier if you work if you work with a, a, with Adol GS and the Microsoft Graph in, graph in the past you can work exactly the same way uh, with the Microsoft um, Graph and SharePoint Framework client-side web parts. So similarly to what you've done in the past, there is the config that actually then describes our web part and ties that into an app registered with AAD. So here you see the I I ID of our app. And here you see resources that we want to ask. So in, in this case, we want to access the Microsoft Graph. In the web part, if we go down, um, initially you've seen that we showed the button that users can use to sign in with they, their AAD account. So that is here. And on a click, which is here, we call the sign in function, which starts the login flow using the ADLGS library and once that that's done we actually re reach out to Microsoft Graph we first get the access token to it and once we have that we use the REST API call to get the data from the Microsoft Graph so that's it it's that simple and it uses exactly the same approach as you would in the past uh, to access the Microsoft Graph from single page apps or other things that you would add on a um, um, on a page. So, if you learn how to do do that now in preview, um, imagine that whenever the improvements will will be 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 available, it will will become even easier, right? So everything that that you learn today and how how to work with the Microsoft Graph, you will be able to benefit of um, anytime. And one thing, a kind of additional thing, exactly on, on what Waldex said, is that yes, this is slightly complex now, and we're working on getting it slightly more uh, optimized in the future, so make it more seamless. But already today, you can start, let's say, building your uh, draft versions of the craft. Microsoft craft based uh, web parts, like in the, this case, this is showing the upcoming meetings. Um, just agree on the fact that yes it's complex now but let's concentrate on the business logic of the web part and we'll we'll make it more seamless uh, from an accessibility perspective well access perspective uh, on getting information uh, from the graph so that is, this does not block you to start building and designing your craft based app, uh, web parts for the time being that's really the key point yep and with that let's go back to the slides sounds good and just to repeat that one more time, uh, we are looking into uh, addressing uh, these challenges in practice. So we are looking into having much better Azure AD integration with client-side web parts. So if you're running into this, if you're planning to implement something super cool using Microsoft Graph and you're running into these issues, um, we will address and make this thing better in the future. And we'll make sure that we have a proper guidance updated uh, around these limitations or around the, the future capabilities whenever we uh, release those improvements as part of the upcoming uh, dev release drops. But I think that's that's pretty much sums up the, the webcast. So anything you want to add, uh, Waldek, on the, on the general discussion? Um, even though the current situation isn't optimal, I'd encourage everyone to give it a, a try and to, act, to actually think about how could you average the Microsoft Graph um, inside the web parts that you build, because they they really offer you some great scenarios that that you could you, that you could use to improve how people collaborate. Absolutely, absolutely. So at this point, um, it's. It, it is definitely worthwhile to have a test and play around with the scenarios, play around with how to access the data, even though the accessing data might isn't it that simple and optimal right now, but you can still, after you're accessing the data, you can actually implement the web part uh, in the right way already. But I think that's enough for this particular topic. So thank you for everybody for, who's watching and we'll come up with a new webcast sooner or later. <laughs>